Hey everyone, today we are gonna be taking this boring laundry room and we're gonna be turning it into this. Are you excited? I know I am to share the process with you and I wanna say a big thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the laundry room is actually on the left side of this room, but if you look at it, it actually impedes the walk space a bit. So we thought it'd be better to move it over here in this nook, which is originally where I was going to put the mud room bench and everything. So we're going to flop things around today and put the laundry room on this side. And I'm really excited for it because there's a lot of room for it and it won't impede the walk space at all. So. I ended up removing everything out of the room and then I had the plumbers come and then the electrician came and then the HVAC people came to put everything back in order to make it um, functional for us to swap the spaces. The contractor did a really good job of just cutting a nice square pieces into the wall and then replacing the drywall with the original piece, but now I have to repair that a little bit. So I'm going to be using this uh, drywall tape. There's a few different styles you can get. I like this because it's kind of like has the holes in it and it's sticky on the one side so you can easily just press it onto the wall and it will stay. And then it also allows you to put that mud through it, which is awesome. So I went ahead and taped up all four sides and then I got the drywall mud from the store, my drywall putty knife to press that into the cracks and you really want to make sure you fill that in and then you can go back and fan it out nice and smooth. This is actually going to be a two layer job if I was going to be um, leaving the drywall as it is but I'm going to be covering up this wall but I wanted to make sure I repaired the drywall if that makes sense. So I had a couple different spots to, so I went ahead and just marked it on there and then I just used a scoring knife to score that on the front side and then you can break it off on the back side. I basically ended up making a U shape and then I'm going to repeat the same process I did for the top, adding my drywall screws and doing all of that. Now it's time to choose the color of paint for the wall. I picked up these two colors at the store and I originally liked them, but then when I put them on the wall, this first one was like, mm, that's not the color I was going for at all. So I definitely encourage you to get samples because seeing it on the wall, it makes a huge difference. I went back to the store and picked up three more colors and asked you guys on my community tab and also on Instagram, which one you liked and a lot of you voted for the one I picked. So thank you so much for your help. All right, so I went to the hardware store and I picked myself up four of these five inch shiplap boards. These are great because they actually interlock into each other and they automatically have that nickel spacing. And these were a little bit pricier than the faux shiplap that I have shared with you before on my channel for the bathroom and then my old mudroom, but I would have needed to buy two sheets of that and four boards of this cut in half was about the same price. So I just went ahead and got this because it was already primed and ready to go and that just saves me a little bit of work. So they sell this in all different sizes so be sure to check it out. I will have everything I can linked in the description box below that I used for this video today. So I have my first boards cut at six feet long and that's gonna take me all the way across this back span. The only part that I'm gonna have to notch out is right down where the water hookup is for the washing machine. So I'm gonna put the first few boards on and then add those in later. Something else I did was also take note of where all my studs are on the wall before I put this on because it'll be harder to find when these are on the wall. I just wrote those down on a piece of paper. I'm just hooking up my brad nailer to my air compressor and I have my level just to make sure the first board goes up level is always nice, making sure it's pretty much flush with the wall and the ceiling. And then I'm going to nail into the tongue part of the board. And then for the first board, I actually ended up putting um, one at the top and bottom of the left side of the board just to make sure it was on there um, because I'm actually not using a trim piece on the side. But if you were, you wouldn't have to do that. So I'm just going to repeat this process and then once I get down to where the water line area is, uh, you'll see me notch it out. I make a couple marks and everything and then I take it to the saw and notch that out. Only, 
Now, I don't want you to be intimidated by this DIY project. All of this is super easy to do, and you may not have all the tools. You can rent tools from the hardware store if you need to. Uh, it's taking me a couple years to get the tools that I have, but the ones that I do have are very uh, multi-purpose, and they function for pretty much all of the projects I work on. Now I'm just repeating the same process for the rest of the wall and since all the boards are pretty much the same size it was super quick and easy um, and you can obviously do this in the traditional horizontal pattern as well it'd be the same process for you. For the ceiling, I just went ahead and trimmed down a small piece of trim. You can buy it already done, but I didn't have one on hand, so I just trimmed it down and added it to the top so that you wouldn't see the jaggedness of the unlevel ceiling. So now we're going to be working on the shelves for the laundry room. I'm using my table saw here and I marked on where I need to cut off. This is just 1 by 12 pine boards and I got them in 8 foot lengths, but I only need a little bit less than six feet so once I got those all cut down I went ahead and just took my portable little sander with, with 220 grit sandpaper and then I went back with 120 to make sure it was nice and smooth and you always want to sand in the green of the wood now I'm going to be making the shelf brackets I'm not using actual brackets on the wall I'm making my own um, basically floating shelves so I have a um, almost a one by three here and I basically um, made three rails sticking out so those would be the shelf supports and that is plenty um, you want a support about every two and a half to three feet um, you can do more or less depending on what you're exactly you're putting on for the load but I'm not gonna have anything super heavy on this so this is just fine I put my level up on the wall um, and I always put one screw in so you can see and level it out For my bracket support on the wall, I pre-drilled everything where all of the studs were on the wall. That way I could drive my screw right into it and it would not split my wood. So now that that part is done, I'm going to take some spackle and just fill in a couple of the nail holes that I had to um, put on the outside of the boards, not on the tongue part because I had a few warped boards and I needed to fix that. So always use that and then you can just scrape it down and sand it before you're ready to paint. Got an angled brush and a paint. Might be able to do this whole wall with a sample, so we'll see. I ended up getting three other colors from the store and I put it on a piece of poster board to see which color I liked with the flooring and also the wall itself and my sweet friend Lynette recommended Pale Oak and this was definitely the winner. We both liked it a lot and I'm so happy she recommended this because it was the perfect tone between all the ones that I had chosen. So now after I've gotten all the edges done, I'm going to go in with my roller and finish up this wall. I added two coats to the wall and it worked perfect with the sample size that I had, which was just wonderful. Now we're going to work on building the floating shelves. So I took my wood glue, added it to the very trim edge of the 1x4. That's going to sit on my 1x12 and this is all pine wood and I'm putting a nail in about every 8 inches or so and that way it will hold. Now this is going to be the bottom shelf so I have plumbing underneath it so I'm just leaving it basically like a short L shape. 
The second shelf is going to be up higher on the wall, and so I want this to encase my shelf bracket that we built. So I'm again repeating the same process, and then I'm going to be adding the bottom shelf, and it's going to basically make a large U shape, and the inside is hollowed out so that that can go around the bracket. So I had used three different color stains on the wood board here, and I just didn't like the color of the wood that it was coming out to be. I really wanted it to match my floor, and I could not get it. It didn't matter what type of wood I used either. So uh, in the end, I decided to scrap the lighter wood option and go a bit darker. So I tried using an ebony color stain, and I didn't like that. Then I used a dark walnut, and it was just a little too red for me. And then I ended up finding um, this in my stash. I had this color matched um, a couple years ago for our cabinets in our last house and it was the perfect color. So I ended up just finishing this out on all the rest of the boards and then it's going to be the next day and we are actually going to work on the decor accents for the laundry room now. I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor, Cricut. I'm actually going to be using my Cricut Maker to design labels for the laundry room, and I love using my Cricut machine. I actually have a Cricut Joy as well, and it's very versatile, and it's Bluetooth enabled, and it's small and compact, and it does a really good job. But I also like the fact that I have the larger machine, which is the Cricut Maker, and I can make massive amounts of projects with that as well. And you can create so many different items. I love it for crafting, but also for household items like today's laundry room makeover. So with that, let me show you all the items that I'm going to be using to create my pieces. Most of the time you are going to be using uh, transfer tape um, to transfer your lettering or whatever image you have to another object that you're creating. They have permanent vinyl and um, non-permanent vinyl, so you'll just want to pick whatever works for your project. Today I'm actually going to be using some writable vinyl and I already have it cut to size. The other tool that I use often for most of my items is the weeding tool. And this little tool helps you flatten it and seal it to your project. And then of course we have some scissors which are really handy. And then today I'm gonna to be using actually my Cricut pen. Um, this is great for drawing. They sell these in different thicknesses. I'm just using the ballpoint, um, 0.3, so I can get a nice handwriting out of it. And then of course there's different size mats that you can get as well. I have the 12 by 12 and also the 12 by 24. So get whatever works for you. So you can get a lot of different supplies and materials for Cricut machine, but those are the ones that I typically use most often. So now I'm gonna take you into Cricut design space and show you how I'm gonna create the labels for the laundry room. You're gonna open up Cricut Design and I'm gonna go straight to the shapes. I'm gonna pick a square and then I'm actually gonna hit the unlock button there on the left and I'm gonna drag that however large I want it and then change the color to white. Then I'm gonna go back to shapes and get the score line and then instead of scoring it, we're actually going to go up here and change it to a pen mark uh, line because we want it to draw out our line. And then you can again unlock it and make it however large you and small you want. Now I'm gonna go to text and type out what I want it to say. And then for this, I'm going to go to the alignment tool, center it, that's because I want it that way. And then I'm going to go to the fonts, and I want a writing font, and this one worked out really nice. And again, you can unlock it and then pull and drag it however large or small you want it. And I'm using the little cross in the middle to help me align everything and making sure it's all straight and where I want it centered. And then I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to just adjust the sides just a teeny bit here. Once that is done, then I will go ahead and um, go over all of it and then group it together up here at the top right. And then I can right click it and then duplicate it. And then I can just highlight all of that again and then ungroup it and then I can just change it from there. So everything is the same size and the same font and keeps it simple and easy. Now I'm going to send it to the Cricut machine. I'm going to choose the product I want. You can select from hundreds of different items of um, what you want to print it on. I you're going to take your mat and put the vinyl on it. You're going to insert it and it has these two tabs on the left and right which keeps it from wobbling back and forth. Then you will see the arrow flashing. You're going to hit that and it's going to load your mat for you and prepare everything. Now I'm going to be drawing on the design so I'm going to load in my Cricut pen here. It's super easy to use. You're just going to push it down and you'll hear it pop and then you're going to close that clasp. The right one is actually where your blade goes and those are easily changeable if you need to. And now you're going to hit the flashing C and that'll start the project. We're going to draw first and then it will cut for me. Mm -hmm. 
So I got a couple different glass containers for the laundry room. This is actually a juice jar and I thought it'd be perfect for the laundry detergent. So I'm just using my little uh, weeding tool and lifting that off. You can also use the paddle to do that. And then when I put it down, I'm gonna start at the center and then fan it out so it eliminates any of the bubbles. Super easy. And you can do this for so many different projects in your house. I did it for the uh, spice cabinet and then labeling part of my craft supplies already. And with a flat surface like this one, you're gonna apply the same way. You're gonna to wanna to clean your surface. And then um, when I press it down, I'm actually gonna be using my scraper tool. This is really good at making sure that vinyl is laying flat on your surface and there's no bubbles. I love the fact that you can pretty much customize anything you want in your home using Cricut. So thank you again to them for sponsoring today's video. So now we're gonna be adding the shelves into the laundry room. That's a good fit add the second shelf and this is basically um, like a big U shape and it's this part is going to slide all the way onto that bracket. Just like that you have a floating shelf. Yay! So now I'm going to get my nail gun and nail it into the back support. Instead of having this big clunky thing that's kind of ugly, I have something pretty that holds the liquid. And if you do pods or something, then you could get a really cute jar, maybe something like this to hold them. Very basic, but yet it's simplicity, simplicity for the eyeballs. And I'll be honest with you, I never use the cap. I usually just pour and eyeball it. So this works for me. You do what works best for you. Never up, never down, never Like a theme in a song, clever Feeling high, feeling low at the same time Feel so right, then I'm wrong, hoping I'm I thought lavender would be really pretty in this room to add a little pop of color, but also just because it's really refreshing, even though it's not real. <laughs> I have essential oils for that which I use for my dryer balls. And so I just got this little basket. I'm gonna put my dryer ball in there. I also have another one, but it's with the laundry right now. And the essential oils, and it helps contain the wonderful smell as well. And I'm just gonna set that right there. So I had this beautiful vase in my last laundry room, and uh, I thought it could go in here too. It's just gorgeous. It's a heavy beast though, let me tell you. I'm just going to put some eucalyptus in there. And then I decided to print out this beautiful art piece. I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful. And I feel like it just adds a lot to the space. I love these types of bins with lids because you can stack them, but they also are just aesthetically pleasing, which if you know me, I'm all about that. Probably should roll those, but you know, I'll do that another day. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, where are you hanging up any clothes? Well, we don't hang dry too many items in our home, so I wanted to just add a small, um, basically, bracket that would pull out, and I thought this was just awesome. It's really functional, I and mean, when you're not using it, it just sits flush to the wall pretty much, and I finally decided to remove this ugly tag that's been on there since we've owned this thing, probably a good 14 years now <laughs> and the dryer door was actually on the wrong side now so to switch that all you have to do is take out the little plugs screw it in on the other side and flip it over and you're good to go so I am so happy that we decided to take the original laundry room and move it over here in this nook it is such a great use of the space and I can't wait to work on the mud room this is how the laundry room is looking it's so peaceful it's beautiful 
and I'm going to be adding lots more storage to the other side on the mudroom side that'll be coming in the next few weeks, so be on the lookout for that. I hope today's video gave you lots of ideas and ways you can DIY a space in your home. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and be sure to check out my other DIY and makeover videos linked down in the description box below. Also, let me know which option you like best. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one.